So I've got a good project today. I've been slowly picking away at this Greener number four Arbor Press. And in the past, I made this hand wheel for it and I casted that. You can look for one of those other videos. Today, we're gonna make a handle for this. And it's a really simple lathe project. I'm lucky enough to have some stainless that I know is stainless because it's, sitting, it's been sitting out in the yard for about a year and it hasn't rusted yet. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take a measurement of this because we can't start anything until we have an idea of what we're gonna build. And we'll just come up here. It looks like we've got to do about, we've got about eight inches of a shoulder that we're going to have to create for it. And now let's figure out what that shoulder is going to look like. Because that metal is an inch and a quarter, and it's not quite going to fit in here. Okay, so this should go pretty well. We've got to cut her down 50 thou, eight inches. You know what? I might even get crazy on this, and we might even do a little bit of a knurling on it. So that'll be kind of fun. Also, I did a little bit of an upgrade here. I'm trying the GoPro 6. It says 7 on the side of the case, but we're going to give that a bit of a go, too. That's going to be another little bit of an option. I just, just recently upgraded to that. And uh, I'm actually, I'm really excited about that. That uh, should give a little bit more detail to you guys out there. And I really hope you guys enjoy that. Now, if I had it out here, it's kind of not following the rule. Now, the rule is 1 to 3. For every 1 inch that I have grabbing of diameter, I can go out three inches. So this is well beyond that. So that means I got to put a center drill in the end of this and support it by some kind of means, right? So let's slide that in now. So in one of my other videos, I got in a bit of heck by actually a tool and die maker, <laughs> which in my personal opinion, tool and die makers, there's machinists and then there's tool and die makers. And they're like, they're way above the skill level of a machinist because they, uh, they, dial in, they deal in such high precision. So he told me that in my boring video, which he's absolutely right, I didn't show dialing in the inside of the bore. And uh, I really apologize for that. So I'll just kind of catch it in this video here. And you know what, it's just a handle, but uh, I'm just kind of showing it just so you guys see it, just so you know it's the basics that you need to do. So we're within five thou there, so not, not a big deal. Now I'll just switch this tool out. Face that off, slap a center drill in it, and then we'll bring it out the eight inches and turn down the diameter. That's a thousand RPM, should be good, eh? Pour a little bit, and we're supposed to be. I'm just gonna put it on the 10 there just so we remember it. Telltale sign of your height being off is you're going to have that little dimple on the inside there, which isn't super ideal, but this is what we got today and we're going to fix that quick. To be frankly honest, we want a bit of room in between here and the and the cutter, so we're just going to come out an extra half inch just to give us a bit of play. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to create a chamfer right now on this, and I'm just going to be just. Turning the two handles at the same time here, both reasonably equal. If you're new to machining, that's a really cool skill builder for you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to touch off, as you can see, I'm going to zero it. I got to take off 50 thou. So 
we're at 247. So we want to take a 46 cell on that. Probably. I mean, we're just shooting for, for close. So let's go 46 cell in. So 46 cell in. I'm actually going to hit zero on it just in case I have to measure and check it out. Click my engage. back out. Now I'm going to measure that. We're going to do one finishing pass. That's coming in at, I think that was like 212. Moved a little bit when I took it off. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go back. We're going to go back. Remember I zeroed it there at 45 back in here we're gonna to go to 12 12 right there not that one okay close enough I'm gonna hit zero again just gonna keep an eye on that while we're going across and we're, oh yeah we got a touch off here so I'm gonna kind of eye it we want eight inches right so I'm gonna hit my zero up top and we're just gonna click that in we're just gonna go all as way we're going across there. we're gonna have a look at the chips that are coming off of there these chips aren't exactly sixes and C's, which is kind of ideal for what we're looking for, but at least it's not like one of my other videos where it come off in a big stringy nest and a bird's nest. The bird's nest can be really dangerous and you want to kind of avoid that. Also, I have to apologize for the sound quality in this video. I'm taking steps to make that better in the next one. We're still in a bit of an experimental phase, but I think you're going to like the next one because I'm buying a shotgun mic and it's going to be a lot clearer sound and you're going to like it a little bit better. As we're coming up to the end of the cut, we just got to make sure that we don't run it into the chuck. And what you don't see off camera there is I'm watching my digital readout, probably not as well as I could have, and I'm going to click it off at 8 inches, ideally. Now what happened here was I clicked it off actually at 7 inches and 800 thou, which was 200 thou short, and then I had to go back and fix that. I'm too busy talking and I'm not paying attention. Kicked it over a little bit early, so I just created a little back step on there. That's not a big deal. Coming in here at 97, so we're 3 thou under when we want it, but that's okay. I'll check this one here. 196. How much did we make? What was our mistake here? Let's take a look here. You can't see it, I'm just gonna, you just have to trust me, it's five cow under. I actually, I actually shoved that in there a little extra, just cut that, cut that back, so that's no big deal. So now in theory, this beautiful thing should fit in there, no problem at all. I got my chamfer over here. Let's flip this bar around, set it up for knurling, just for the last eight inches of it. I think that would be really nice. Now, this bar is actually bent a little bit worse than we'd actually originally seen here, and that's why later on I'm going to do the operation a little bit different. But let's talk about what I'm doing here right now. Like you saw me do earlier, I did the chamfer by hand, and this is good hand-eye coordination, and, and everyone's capable of doing this just with a bit of practice. Now, a ball turning attachment would be ideal here, but it is capable to do by hand. You're just going to have to do a little bit of file work a little bit later on in some sanding. The other way. Back the other way again. I'm going to go just a little bit faster on my uh, cross slide. Oh, shoot. Now I'm just going to skim it. Come back from the other way.
I'm going to do it. Don't do what I do. And I'm just going to file this a little bit by hand here with my non-laid file. First off, I'm going to hit it with a double cut file to get it down quite quickly to roughly the size that I want. And then I'm going to go grab a single cut file and do the exact same thing again. Then I'll end up coming in there with some 60 and maybe some 220 grit and really polishing it up. Yeah, there was some 60 grit and all this is going to shine up real nice. I'm going to have my hand on the waves here, just kind of gauge it so it doesn't fall in. Now I'm sure some of you are watching what I'm doing here and are a little bit nervous about it, and probably rightfully so. Let's talk about the do's and don'ts of this. What I've learned over the years of the don'ts are, is you never wear rings. You'll notice I have a ring on my finger, but it's a tattoo ring. And I've got it for, <laughs> for quite an important reason. I know of people that have had accidents with rings, and you don't want to have this running with the machinery. Also, when standing on the lathe, if you do choose to do it and take the risk, you don't ever want to wrap that sandpaper more than half around the work. Anything more than half can easily start getting sucked into the machine and it'll basically be like a big pulley system that's going to zip it in there. It generally will happen so fast that you don't even know that it happened. But this is looking pretty good. Let's stop there. this and have a that's look at it. looking pretty good, eh? So what's happening here is everything that's sticking out of the lathe is actually a bend in the material. I'm pretty sure this 20-foot bar got bent somehow, and that's why I ended up with it. But let's make something of it, and it's a pretty easy solution to this problem. I'm going to take this out of the chuck and I'm actually going to spin it around. And remember that center drill that I had on the other end? I'm actually going to run it off that center drill. Let's try this. Let's and then there's probably about a 20 or 30 thou bow that I have in this. And I'm actually just going to cut that out and make a small recess. Because when you're knurling, you need to have it absolutely centrifugal to the center. So you don't have it running in and out, in and out, creating vibrations and losing its spot and breaking stuff. And really, in the end, grand scheme of things, I think it's going to actually give it a better look to it, rather than just the knurling just kind of popping out of the material. So we're going to stay away from this area here when it gets knurling. Got a bit of a thread on there, but that's okay. Straight up to there, and back out. Turn it off before something bad happens. To use this ruler. This poor, poor ruler. We're gonna be we're gonna be really careful with it so we don't squish it. But uh, we're gonna loosen our height off. We're gonna loosen this off so we can move it up and down. We want it riding on the center. Now, if I left it there, obviously it's below, right? So we're gonna bring it up quite a bit. Lock it down. Kind of a trial and error method. A little bit lower. Bit of a touch there. Go ahead in here. That's looking pretty good. It looks a little bit high. Bring down just a hair. Now I'm not pushing hard on the ruler. Probably not the best way to treat the ruler. But I'm not really leaving any marks in the ruler, so you just gotta be careful you don't bend it. Okay. Now, knurling is actually kind of a fun job. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a couple test knurls on this size here, and I'm just going to do light cuts on it. What I'm looking for is if there's a double knurl, for example, you get a good separation on one side, and then it's almost like doubling up on the other side. That means your height is slightly off, or sometimes your diameter. But what you're going to end up doing is you're going to end up actually bringing that up or down and correcting that. More power is not necessarily going to correct this issue. So what you'll end up doing, like I said, you'll either go up or down, and then you'll move over just a little bit to the left or right, and you'll do another light knurl again. And then once you've got it evenly go. going, so the then you can start you can putting the power to it and actually going all the way across, creating a pattern, 
and then you're going to come back and over top a neural where you were before and you won't even notice that it was there hopefully so you're going to want to put a bit of cutting oil on there just to lubricate this process it's not a cutting process as much as a kind of a pressing process and if you start seeing chips coming off of there you might want to re-examine what's going on and make sure that you're doing it right these chips will later screw up your diamond pattern if you go that far and you're not going to be happy with the end result now remember there's a tremendous amount of force on this so everything has to be rigid one thing that i had a problem with when i was doing this is my tool post was actually kind of walking away a little bit on it because I should have tightened it up just a little bit more. But later on I did go back and I corrected this. And how I knew that was happening is when I got to the end, it wasn't knurling over the full width of that tool there. It's looking pretty good, I think. Nice diamond pattern. I guess I'm at a crossroads right now. Do I want to go deep where there's like a nice diamond to it? Or do I want to kind of keep it a standard, just the checker pattern, not chewing up your hand too much? I think I'll go over it one more time, just to make sure we get the nice diamond checker pattern in there. I think I went over it maybe three or four times, just incrementally looking at it each time I made a pass over it. Let's take it out to the shop and let's have a look. This is a good example of a fully pyramided checker pattern, and it turned out really well. I really enjoyed making this video for you today. And remember, the cost of admission is a thumbs up for the video, and I look forward to making more videos for you in the future. We'll catch you on the next one. All right, that job's all done. On to the next one. Glad you enjoyed this one today. Catch you on the next one.